Hi and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can create a custom subscribe overlay button for your YouTube videos. We're going to be starting in After Effects and create our animation there. Then I'm going to show you the most efficient way to use this through dynamic linking. Sounds complicated, but I promise it's not. This is an easy to follow tutorial. If you do get stuck, let me know and I'll be happy to answer any questions in the comments. Before we begin, I think you know what to do. Let's not waste any more time and jump straight in. Okay, so we're inside of After Effects and the first thing we need to do is create a new composition. Usually I would skip this part of the tutorial, but there's an important step to make this overlay easy to use. This might not sound important, but it'll make a lot of sense at the end of the video. I'm going to name this composition 1920 by 1080 subscribe overlay 01. Set the duration to 10 seconds. We're going to shorten that later and then hit OK. First thing I want to do is hit the speech mark button on my keyboard to bring up these helpful guides. Then we're going to hit Q on our keyboard to grab our shape tool or go up to the toolbar above. You want to make sure that you have your rectangle tool selected. If you don't, you can use Shift and Q to cycle through the shape options. Next, I'm going to add a fill to the rectangle and then set the color to red. I'm also going to remove the stroke. Then we need to add our shape into the composition. I don't want my button to be too big, so I think this looks about right to me. For this animation, we need to make sure our anchor point is perfectly in the center of the shape player. Now we need to add in our text. Hit Command T to bring up the text tool and type out subscribe. The font I'm going to be using is Helvetica New and I'm going to set the weight to condensed bold. Let's centralize the anchor point and drag the text over our shape layer. To make sure they are perfectly aligned, select both the layers and then head over to the align tab. Make sure you have it set to selection and then align both these layers vertically and horizontally. Everything is set up, now we can begin the animation. Select the shape layer and hit S on your keyboard to reveal the scale properties. Then click the stopwatch and add a keyframe at the beginning and set this to zero. After that, jump forward 10 keyframes by holding command shift and then hitting the right arrow key. Set the scale to 100%. Next, we need to fine tune the motion. Right click the last keyframe and then go to keyframe assistant and add easy ease. Then with both of the keyframes selected, go to the graph editor. Right click and make sure that you're editing in the speed graph. Then grab the lever on the last point and drag this all the way to the left. If we head back into our timeline and preview this, we can see this is looking much better. Before we do anything else, let's turn on motion blur and then turn this on for the shape and text layer. To apply the same animation to our text, all we need to do is make sure that the cursor is at the end of the scale animation on our shape layer and then grab the pick whip tool and parent this to the shape layer. This means any animation that happens to the shape layer will affect the text layer too. Let's preview this. Looking good. For the next part of the animation, we're going to be adding a stroke around the edges of the button. Duplicate the shape layer by hitting Command D. Then we're going to remove the scale properties and parent this to our master red shape layer. Then remove the fill and add a white stroke. I'm going to set the stroke width to 5. If we expand the layer options, you'll see under contents we have the options to add a trim paths. I'm going to make sure that both the end and start point is set to zero, then add keyframes for both. Jump forward 10 keyframes and set them both to 100%. All we need to do now is offset the start keyframes to create the stroke completion effect. Don't forget to turn off the motion blur. This is too fast at the moment, so I'm going to select all the keyframes and then add easy ease and then move the last keyframes further apart. Let's solo this and preview it. Not bad. To add another stroke, all we need to do is duplicate this and then move that layer forward. That's all the animation for the subscribe button done. However, if you do want to make this look a bit more bespoke, you can finish this off by adding a small icon. Drag your image into the timeline and then align this to the center of the composition. Grab your shape tool and have it set to ellipse. Then holding command and shift, drag a mask over the center of your image. Don't forget to centralize your anchor point too. Hit S on your keyboard to reveal the scale properties and then scale this down so it's small enough to be fully hidden by our master shape layer. Parent this to the shape layer and then hit P to reveal the position properties. Turn on the keyframes, jump forward 10 frames and then add another point and then position this to appear from the left. Add easy ease at the end and then go into the graph editor and drag the lever all the way to the left. Turn on motion blur and move this layer below the shape layer and let's preview this. 
I'm going to make a few minor adjustments, but overall, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. The last thing we need to do is add a pulse to our text layer. This is really easy to do. Find the part where you want the pulse to happen and hit S. We need to add three scale keyframes, all 10 frames apart. Then go to the middle keyframe and increase the scale of this slightly. So this looks about right to me. Select all the keyframes and set them to easy ease. Jump into the graph editor and this time we're going to tweak the points like this. In the center, pull the left lever all the way to the left. We're going to do the same thing on the right but the opposite direction. So pull that lever all the way to the right. Let's watch the preview. As you can see the animation starts fast and then slows down in the middle and then quickly drops back down. Now we're done with the animation, here's a quick way to reverse it. Select all the layers and then pre-compose these by hitting Command, Shift and C. Head into our main composition and trim the subscribe button where the animation stops. Duplicate this layer and then right click it, go to Time, Time Reverse Layer. Drag this to the end and let's preview this. And we're done, we've created our custom subscribe button overlay. So how do we actually use this? Well, you might have seen these overlays come with green backgrounds in other videos. What we're going to be doing is completely different from that. I believe this way is a much easier and more efficient way of doing it. To show you how this works, we need to open Premiere Pro. But first, save your After Effects project file. Inside Premiere, I have the footage and audio for this tutorial. So there are two ways to use a subscribe overlay and I'm going to start by showing you why I don't use the green screen method. Here's a rendered version of my overlay with a green background. If we go to our effects and then search for ultra key, then set the key color to green. What you'll see is that removes all of the green and we're left with just the animation. So in theory, this does the job, but if you slow down the animation, you can see that there are areas of green fringing around the edges, which doesn't look great. Here's a far better way to add your overlays in. Double tap the project bin and then locate the original After Effects project file we created our overlay in. A small box will pop up and this will contain the folders that we have within our After Effects project file. In comps, we can select our 1920 by 1080 sub button overlay, then simply drag this into the timeline and look at the difference. You'll notice that there is no green fringing and it looks much sharper. You can create all of your overlays in After Effects and as long as you label each composition as something that's easy to identify, then you won't have any problems. I hope you found this helpful and good luck with growing your YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and have a great day.